you know, I want to see. It's been uh, nine minutes and thirty seconds, and still, still seems fine. Hello YouTube, today it is Michael and my name is Winslow Parka. What's up YouTube, it's Michael and today we're talking about the Taylor Stitch Winslow Parka, which just happens to be, I say this about almost all my jackets, but this is one of my most favorite jackets of all time. This is the level of jacket that I think I will die with, probably not wearing. At this point at my funeral, I will be wearing like 15 different jackets that I like, but this one definitely uh, my casket will be here, the jacket can be like on the floor near it. Okay, so anyways, the Taylor Stitch Winslow Parka in mustard. Most legendary color they have. They did one drop of it and then they stopped and I was like, oh, I can't believe I missed the nice one. So I bought a blue one and then I sold that one and then they dropped the mustard one like a week after I sold that one and I was like, oh, great, bye. So it was a roller coaster as you can probably tell, but that kind of hits on the first thing I want to talk about, which is, wait, did I have something else I wanted to say first? You'll notice I'm holding an iPad and a pen in my hand. I've never used either of these in making a video and today's the first day. My iPad is still, it's to my right right now, it's off and my pen is to my left. They're doing great. Oh, before I say any of that, real quick, obviously, as you can see, we will be intermittently cutting to watching me in the shower. Yeah, that's good. Which I hope is okay, judging by some of the comments left on my videos recently. Some of you would really like that. Obviously, the real test is to see how water resistant this jacket is just because I feel like it'd be fun. I also, I really want to do it with a barber jacket in the future. Okay, we are moments away from the big moment. Taylor's working hard, but so am I. Also, real quick, you should definitely subscribe, like this video, comment, follow me on Instagram, all of those things. Okay, so we're doing a little test message I'm gonna put in the front pocket of this jacket so we can see when it's like, you know, wet. I tried to make the smiley face have hard, <laughs> hard eyes. Hold on. I love you message from Taylor. I am folding up and putting in my right pocket. There is a flaw to the jacket and a pretty big flaw at that, but there's an easy fix. So we'll get into that at the end of the video. Okay, welcome to the test. We are in Taylor's bathroom because my bathroom in my apartment is pretty gross. So we're gonna use hers instead. She has some eucalyptus. It really makes me look like I'm in an indie band album. Anyways, the plan is to turn this water on cold because this is wax. So if it was warm, it wouldn't be good. I also should take my phone out of my pocket and I should take my pants off. I'm wearing a gray shirt under this. I have Taylor's love letter in my right booby pocket. Oh, I have a, I don't know if you can see it through the GoPro. We had a tape on, I forgot the strap, but I have a timer here. The first time I feel that it's wet, I will stop the timer. And we'll see. Initiating shower in three, two, one. Okay, and speaking of that flaw, this does this make me seem like I'm smarter than I am? Okay, so speaking of that one flaw, there is something really cool about Taylor Stitch. They are basically not like the king of heritage wear or menswear or anything like that, but I look at Taylor Stitch as kind of the biggest version of this new, like, trendy kind of hipster. Uh, you know, I wear fisherman turtlenecks like this, but I never fish. They're the most popular, like, entrance into the world of, like, heritage outerwear. I'm judging that basically solely off how many Instagram followers they have. But what makes Taylor Stitch really cool is that they are such a small company and a new company and a really fast moving company. I think they drop a new product literally every Friday. What that means is they're constantly making stuff and they're constantly improving. Also, this video is not sponsored by Taylor Stitch. I wish it was. But what's really cool, what I was saying is that they're constantly changing their fits, innovating things, fixing things, adding things, removing things, whatever. I had not the original Winslow Parka, but I think like the second iteration of it. And on that jacket, I had a lot more complaints. There was two main ones, one of them being that the entire body was lined in wool, which isn't really a problem. You can wear sleeves to cover that up, but the arms were lined in like a scratchy wool. And I was like, well, this is not that convenient. This kind of itches. The other thing, which was just a big, huge glaring problem was that there was a 
Where, where's a good example? The sleeves weren't gusseted, so if you think about like a denim jacket or like this flannel, you could open it up just like this. So the problem is when it's windy or when it's raining, all the water, all the wind goes right into there. It's basically like if there's a giant hole in the arm of your jacket. Then this version came out. I didn't expect anything, didn't even really think about it, but the sleeves were lined with acetate and it was gusseted. So I was like, wow, this is better already. 15 seconds. But if we're looking at the jacket, the shell is 100% organic waxed cotton by Hallie Stevenson, which we'll get into in a little bit, but it's great. Also, organic, so no pesticides or anything like that. Can you beat it? Oh, I think I'm allergic to my sweatshirt. Real quick side note, the reason I look slightly like a mess is because I just did the shower scene. So I'm still soaking wet. I just did that whole part without recording audio. Okay, so if we're looking at the lining of this jacket, it is 60% wool, 40% nylon, which I say this all the time, that doesn't upset me because nylon and polyester both have things that make the wool stronger, make it pile less. Just so we're clear, I'm saying the word pile, but I mean to say pill. Although this lining is starting to pile at the bottom and where I keep my keys especially, which isn't too good of a sign. It's all right, I don't know why it would do that. I have had this jacket for I think a year and a half or two and I have worn it a lot, so kind of expected, but still also at the same time, I was like, oh, that's that's wearing down a little bit faster than I thought. But you'll see on the inside, there are two internal booby pockets, which are great, those are awesome, but the only thing I would add to those to make them a little bit better is an interior nylon lining because it is just the wool nylon blend as the pocket. And I think that nylon lining would add a lot of strength. I think we're okay. 33 seconds. Also, side note, that little Hallie Stevenson sewing thing on the side, love that. I don't know what it is about sewing things on clothes, like little sewing patches like that, but every time I see them, I'm like, gotta get that jacket. And also, finally, like I said, the sleeves are lined in acetate, so you can slip your arms in there easily, just like a nice Vaseline. Uh, and on the inside of them is polyfill, so they're actually insulated. Nothing crazy, but they're still insulated. Taylor Stitch on their website says this jacket is warm enough to last you all winter long. That is probably because they live in San Francisco and it is just one temperature there every day, 63 degrees. Must not get too cold in San Francisco. But yeah, anyways, always remember that Taylor Stitch warmth levels are gauged off of San Francisco. I think we're still good back here. One minute. This, I would say, is basically as warm as a medium weight wool sweater with a windbreaker over it, which is pretty warm. Still, pretty warm, but not all winter long. So I would say with a long sleeve shirt or a t-shirt maybe even, you're probably good with this jacket in like 50 to 45 degrees, and then you'll probably max out at like 70 degrees, then it's like too stuffy. Obviously, the color of this jacket is incredible. I love mustard. Okay, so now let's talk fit. The fit of this jacket is basically perfect because if you go true to size, it is not gonna be too big, but it's not gonna be too small. If you put it on with just a t-shirt or something, it has some structure, so it looks really nice, but you can also layer a really heavy sweater or something under it. I'm 5'9", 151.9 pounds, and I wear a 38, and it fits me great. I love the fit of this jacket. I also really like that Taylor Stitch doesn't do they do all straight cuts at the bottom. A lot of companies do this, where they add like a little tail to the bottom. I don't like that style. I'm not that tall. My jackets need to be short and just cut them off like you have a pair of scissors in your hand. A pair of skizzies. Well, I think it's starting to come in here. Two minutes, ten seconds. Okay, so now on to what makes this jacket this jacket is the wax. The waxed cotton is provided by Hallie Stevenson. It's a proprietary blend, I think with Taylor Stitch and Hallie Stevenson, maybe just Hallie Stevenson. I'm not 100% sure, but they say when it gets warm outside, the jacket softens and breathes easier. And when it gets cold, it stiffens up and becomes more wind resistant. It does stiffen up and it does soften. I don't know for a fact if the breathing easier versus when it's cold, the added wind resistance is true. It might be. I don't know how that would be, but I don't know. I guess I'll take their word for now. Oh, on this, I wrote a note about this jacket. This jacket is waxed with beeswax, and I like that. So that's good. Okay, so everybody knows wax cotton is not 100% waterproof, or else this video would be boring because I would just stand in the shower and nothing would happen. 
But the obvious comparison that you can make to any wax jacket is Barber. They are kind of the king of wax cotton and everything like that. Basically, some people will say a Barber jacket when they mean wax cotton, but I don't, I love Barber. I think it's a really cool company. I wanted to get a Barber jacket for a really long time. I don't have one. I've never had one. I have touched them so many times because when I was living near Boston, every time I was in the area, I would go into the Barber store and just stand there and be like, I think I want to try on the Bedale again. <laughs> and they're great and I love the style of them, but I don't see them as practical. First of all, you have to buy a hood for a jacket that's a rain jacket. And I know it's supposed to be like this thing of royalty, this like English countryside, you're hunting birds with your beagle and stuff like that. But I've always looked at it as, even with a trench coat, I'm like, okay, when you have a coat made for the rain, what about your head? Are you supposed to have an umbrella? If you have an umbrella, why do you need the coat? And if you're gonna do a hat, but the hat leaves your neck exposed, so you're still gonna get wet either way. There is a snap-on hood, I know. And I also really like the fact that you can add a liner into a barber jacket when it gets colder, but most people I see, when it's anything besides like a drizzle or light rain, end up looking like my friend Ronnie when it starts raining outside. He's soaked, he's covered in water. Look at the man. He doesn't look like he's having any fun. My back still feels dry. That's about it though. Seven minutes. Nine minutes and 30 seconds and still still seems fine. So I really just, I'm waiting on the back. Everything else I feel like has leaked. So I don't know the recipe that Barbara uses and the recipe that Hallie Stevenson's uses, but there are some differences that I want to talk about really quick in the least scientific way possible. Okay, so the breakdown is the Hallie Stevenson wax is way, 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 way tougher, thicker, and more enduring than Barber. And I think it's because, I think the Barber blend, I read that it's like a silk oil. It's more of an oil, fatty, lipid coating, and their jackets look wet and they feel a little bit more wet than the Hallie Stevenson material used by Taylor Stitch. And I think basically a Barber jacket is more oily than it is waxy, and a Hallie Stevenson jacket is more waxy than it is oily. And what you get with that is water repellency on Barber and more closer to waterproofness on Hallie Stevenson, still water repellent at the end of the day, but a lot closer to being actually impenetrable. And I think that's because there's, you know, just a thicker or thick layer of wax over the canvas when compared to Barber, which is more saturated in like a more classic original oily type texture. When I first got the Winslow, it is a little wet and oily, which is expected with any wax cotton things like that. But when I touch a barber, when I go to the barber store, this sounds like I'm talking about touching a guy that cuts my hair. Their jackets are a lot slicker. Benefits and drawbacks you have here is that the barber jacket has this relaxed look to it. It is still, you can tell it's kind of wet, it looks dense or saturated, but it's not as wrinkly as this jacket, for example, because there's less wax in it. So I think that's kind of the draw. And when it comes down to practicality of these two jackets, obviously when you look at them, you should know right away. The Winslow is more meant to be out in the rain, working on something, doing something out there longer or whatever. And then the barber jacket is more of like a brisk walk to your car or if you have an umbrella or something like that. 10 minutes. Getting kind of bored now. I thought it was gonna be much quicker. 12 minutes and 36 seconds. I'm gonna stop at 15 minutes and just call it a wash. I think the, the wax on the jacket is just working great. So 15 minutes will cut off. Battery on the GoPro is at 3%. Two more minutes and it's a wash. It's done, it's not gonna get wet. 10 seconds. Okay, perfect timing. Battery on the GoPro died. I honestly don't think this, okay, first off, I'm gonna be wet when I take this off, but only because of certain areas. One, like I said. So real quick, this jacket is a beast. I basically just quit after 15 minutes because I didn't think the jacket was gonna falter anytime soon. If you want me to do it in a longer environment, I will figure out something that's more efficient than just standing in the shower, but, I know I could sit in a river. But yeah, basically, it didn't show any signs of faltering, and I think that was due to the wax. And maybe also a big part of it was due to the wool lining, but that wasn't even that wet, but that definitely adds some more water repellency. So I don't know, I can keep going, but the jacket's a tank, and I really don't think you're gonna find yourself in a situation.
Oh, Taylor Stitch and Tracksmith collection. I'll have to check it out. I really don't think you're gonna find yourself in a situation where you'll be wearing the Winslow parka and be drenched. Just because if you're working outside all day, I don't know if you would actually wanna grab a wax cotton jacket. Like if you were actually working on a railroad or something like that, I'm assuming you'd want like a soft shell or a hard shell or something like that. Like just rubber where no water's gonna get in ever and you wouldn't risk it or Gore-Tex or something like that. I know these clothes are built for work wear, but I never really think about people that are actually going out and working in them choose stuff like this. I don't know if that's true, but that's, what I think. If you do though, definitely let me know if you've been in like a downpour for six hours or something. Because eventually this jacket would falter and it would get wet. That's just the nature of wax cotton. But I don't know. I guess we just have to figure out how long. The zipper I think is going to destroy me. Yep. You can see the zipper line straight down. That's a big flaw right there. If there was like a flap or something under it, that would help a little bit. But that, uh, that's a perfect summary. But you can see so far so good. Check the love letter. Dry. Love letter. Dry. Okay. <laughs> I don't think it got through the back at all. Okay, it doesn't look like it. Completely dry. Like I said, that was 15 minutes. I can do longer. The one flaw of the jacket, though, is the zipper. You can see there's basically a line straight down my chest that is soaking wet when the rest of my sweatshirt and me are dry. So, kind of points out the problem area. Water was falling, obviously, like over here, like under my neck and stuff like that. But that I think is unavoidable. It's always gonna go down your sleeves unless you have like a cinch. It's always gonna go down the neck part. It's just, you know, it's just the nature of water. But the zipper, the second I turned into the water and let the shower hit me there, I could feel the water coming in fast. And maybe it's not too big of an issue because most people don't stand in a shower and have water pointed directly at them, but there is an easy fix to that. And I think it would add more value to the jacket. Even just on a warmth scale or a wind resistance scale in general, they could add a storm flap. Either it be behind the zipper and you zip it up and you don't see the storm flap, or you zip the zipper up and then you button a storm flap down. That would obviously basically then keep you dry outside of user error or just getting into the orifices of the jacket that you have to stick your limbs through. That would basically make the jacket perfect and at that point I would have to wear the jacket in my coffin so that would be the 16th jacket in a row I would have stacked on top of myself. Either way though, pretty dry throughout. She notices that it's soaking. Ooh.